It's the mid 90s and you're a journalist in the new sport of MMA. You need exclusive access, but for that, you need credentials. So what do you do? Work hard? Build a legit reputation? Nah, let's just make stuff about ourselves. It's the 90s, what are they gonna do? Google you? And it's going great. You're quickly becoming the number one journalist in the sport. You're getting everything you want. You even made friends with the Sheik. But what do you do when the Sheik invites you to compete in ADCC, the Olympics of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? This is the story of how a string of lies led to a life in prison. This is the story of Rafael Torre. In the mid 90s, the MMA scene was still growing and still very niche. The UFC only started in 93, so there was little to no competition for an up and coming journalist. To his credit, Rafael Torre did some great work. He was probably one of the most popular journalists back then on, on the underground. I mean, Rafael Torre was all over the underground. It was 2000, it was still in the dark ages. So right. it was and easy for a guy to bust up. And he was on speed all the time. I didn't know this until, like, you know, years later. So he but would work hard. Dude, he would always have shit. And Pride loved him. He always had reports. He always <laughs> had interviews. He was he always... Was all oh, up. oh, dude, he was like, probably the, one of the top three writers in, in all of MMA. Well, I remember... Hafiel covered nearly every single MMA show on the West Coast, from the beginnings of King of the Cage to Tachi Palace Place, and illegal fights on Indian reservations. A lot of fighters also enjoyed doing his interviews and appreciated the exposure they would get from doing them. Tori would start getting interviews with top fighters including Ken Shamrock, Hoist Gracie, Tito Ortiz, and Mark Kerr. But as time went on, people started realizing that Hafiel Tori was not who he seemed. It's impossible to know how many lies Tori told, but here are some of the most notable. The first lie Hafiel Tori told people was his name. His name was not Hafiel Tori. It was Ralph Bartle. He used it to convince people that he was a BJJ black belt and half Brazilian on his father's side, which you guessed are also lies. What makes it funnier is he even spelled his fake name wrong. On top of that, Raphael was a fake karate master, fake Navy SEAL, STONE Valor, and fake MMA fighter with an undefeated 14-0 record. But the icing on the cake has to be this. This guy had a friend drop him off in the woods because he said he was going to a kumite karate contest, like a big karate competition, but it was it was no rules and it was secretive. Okay. He dropped, he dropped him off in the woods with a duffel bag. Yeah. He gave him a duffel bag. Like he had a duffel bag with him, rather. <clears throat> and it's like a duffel bag that's just big enough to fit a trophy in it. Yeah. Right? Like about this big. So he, he leaves, goes out into the woods. The guy comes back the next day, he's got a trophy. No duffel bag. The thing about the 90s was, there was little anyone could do to fact check him. He was so well established in the community that nobody questioned him. Tori effortlessly climbed the ladder until he met Shaytanun bin Zayed al Nayyad. After learning of Hafiyah's impressive but entirely bogus resume, the Sheikh invited Hafiyah to compete in his tournament, ADCC, the most prestigious grappling event in the world. Essentially, the Olympics for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And well, can't just say no to the Sheik. In the first round, Hafiel faced Hicks and Gracie Black Belt, Bo Hirschberger, who took a hot, steamy dookie on Tori's face, submitting him in less than one minute. Hafiel was completely embarrassed by the event. He needed a way to gain back street cred. What does he do? Hafiel announces that he's coming out of retirement. He'd fight former student Yoka Big Joe Tianu in a blood feud match at King of the Cage 7. Pretty badass, right? Wrong! Raphael paid Big Joe to take a dive. It was so obvious and everyone just knew. Whatever cred Raphael had was now gone forever. The web of lies had finally caught up to our journalist to be Raphael Tori. He was banned from MMA and never allowed near an event. So what now? Hafiel's career is over now, but he still needs money. 
Time to get a real job? Nah. It's no surprise that Hafia was also a naughty boy. He was having an affair with one of his students named Angelina Richards. Ralph's plan? Murder Angelina's husband, cash out his million dollar life insurance policy, and ride into the sunset with his wife. Sounds like a plan, but he didn't want to get his own hands dirty. So he reached out to former UFC fighter Gerald Streben and offered him 10000 for the hit job. Streben, being the intelligent person that he is, declined. So with no one to do the job, Ralph had to take it upon himself. Somehow, he got the husband into one of his gyms, jumped him, and strangled him to death. After committing the murder, Tori would call Streben again to help him with an alibi. Streben, smart guy, would once again refuse. But it didn't matter because he got away with it. In January, Angelina made a formal claim for the policy proceeds and received a $50,000 advance in March. What did they do with the money? Angelina purchased the Cancun vacation package for herself and Tori six days after receiving the $50,000 advance. Mr. Raphael Tori committed the perfect murder, or so it seemed. A couple years later, it was Gerald Streben's turn to ask for something. Gerald hits up Raphael and says, hey, I want my seven grand. He says, I don't have it. He goes, if you don't pay me by the end of the week, I'm going to tell on you. I'm going to turn you in. <laughs> Didn't give him seven grand. And Gerald tells on An investigation involving Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, and Chris Brennan ensued. Tori admitted to killing Brian, but claimed that it was in self-defense after Brian accused him of having an affair with Angelina and pointed a Glock handgun at him. This time, Tori's string of lies had come to an end for real, and on December 17th, 2003, Tori was arrested and charged with Brian's murder. Following a jury trial, Tori was convicted of murder in the first degree with the intent to profit from the policy proceeds. He was sentenced to life without the ability of parole. The real shame, besides the murder affair and fixed fight, is Ralph Bardo really had something special going on for him, but for whatever reason, he couldn't help but entangle himself in his own web of lies. 